welcome to our Genesis Adventure Bus. My name is Joni Wegman. And I'm Adam Wegman. We were just being called to sell a lot of things that we owned. We felt like our stuff was getting in the way of experiences and we were constantly moving our stuff around and taking so much time just to manage our stuff and our brick and mortar business. And we just kept saying things like, man, I wish we could do this, or we wish we could go there, or I wish this was different. And so finally we just made a drastic change and decided to sell our homestead. We had a little homestead that was on six acres. We did the normal home life. We had chickens, we had goats raising our three kids. We sold that. We put our business up for sale and sold everything in it and minimized down to just a little storage shed. Next thing we knew, we had this bus. Next thing I knew, she booked me a plane ticket to Montana <laughs> and I was picking up a bus and driving it home. <laughs> Welcome to the front of the bus. We have the entry door here, all the states we've been to so far, and the front engine right here where we made a little seating area. And then our upper cabinets, these are all our pantry and storage. My wife's a foodie, she loves to cook, so we have, have a lot of storage for food. Yeah, so up here there was the metal um, front that's in a normal school bus where it has like the medical kit on it and all those things. We took all that paneling off, re-insulated back there and then built out the cabinets as much as we could. This one's a lot deeper. We had to make this one shallower for head space for driving. So this storage basically holds food and different extra things we need for our kitchen. So funny story, I picked this bus up in Montana and I asked several people which route I should take on the way home and they go, well you can probably take Highway 2 through Glacier National Park and I've never driven a 40 foot school bus before. <laughs> so it was quite the adventure. I made it through the mountains just fine, but it was white knuckle for about 100 miles. Driving it, it's a little bumpier than I expected, but kind of expected at the same time because a school bus that's just the way it is but it has plenty of power we i mean i love driving it actually you see everything from up high all the windows it's great so joni actually did a lot of research on the engines and we found the dt466 engine was a great one so that's why i ended up flying out to montana is for this engine basically and then it also has an allison transmission which is pretty much the best on the market so with those that combination we figured we could have a fail safe bus that will you know put a lot of miles on and do us good in the future it's ran flawlessly so far as far as miles per gallon eight to ten miles per gallon we're also towing a car so that's just kind of how it is when your whole life and house is with you i don't expect too much more than that many miles per gallon so the seat we got from a it's a used RV store in Minnesota where we're from and they have clearance items that they don't they don't sell them right away and they'll put them on clearance. So we picked up the seat for super good price. It was a hundred bucks. But I did have to dismantle the air ride seat just to make it work. And with a schoolie, every square inch counts. So I wasn't able to make it so it can be adjusted forward and back. So it's pretty much set for me. So it's perfect for me pushing the pedals, everything. It works great for that. Yeah, it's super comfortable. This is pretty cool. Nice deep drawer. You know, this one's kind of a self-closing, so it stays closed while we're going down the road. Everything else has latches on the inside, so when we're going, it doesn't bounce around and fly open. We built out the dash. This is all wood on top of where the metal used to be, so that's a lot of space that wasn't utilized before. And we had went ahead and made it so we can store stuff up here while we're driving or when we're stationary. And then we have a backup camera right there and that works great in the 40 foot bus when you're backing up it's nice to be able to see what's behind you instead of just using the mirrors and we store books up in front of the dash and actually a lot of this stuff can even stay here while we're driving because there's so much glass you can see everything and it doesn't impede your vision at all and then we do have this rack up here just for when we're stationary we can hang flashlights, oven mitts, things that we're going to use on a daily basis. But when we're driving, we put all that stuff away. So here we have our wood stove. It's a little hot yet, actually. That's one thing we wanted, being from Minnesota, is that burning wood, the, the type of heat that you get from that is so much better than forced air or even a buddy heater or anything like that. So we knew we wanted a wood stove. And I did a little research and found the dwarf stove from tinywoodstove.com and we love it. It actually works amazing. The only problem we had was space. So I didn't have enough space for the clearances they recommended for the stove and I called the company and they said we could, they had pre-tapped holes on the side of the stove here and if you built a one inch 
gap and put a heat shield on, then you can reduce your clearances by half. So we did that, and then we were able to fit everything in here as we wanted. And the other big thing we wanted to make sure we, we had was the ability to cook on top. So we vented the stovepipe out the back, and that way we can use this whole surface to cook on with a cast iron griddle. So we make pancakes on there, heat up our water on there, and it's pretty awesome. This is actually just a, a candle we put on here for smell. And then we have this heat fan. So as the stove gets warm, there's no electricity involved with that fan. It just automatically starts, it creates somehow, I don't even know how it works exactly, but it creates its own electrical current and is able to start the fan. So the hotter the fire gets, the faster the, the fan spins. So this space in particular is built on one of the wheel wells. There's four wheel, well, wheel wells in the bus. This is one of them. So it was a great spot to put the stove. It was up off the floor a little bit, easy to access and put wood in and worked great for that. Efficiency, this stove, if I load it up before bed, and just choke down the um, the flue a little bit. When I wake up in the morning, there's still red coals. I can throw new new wood on there and it'll start a fire again. So it works awesome. Yeah, so underneath, we had a little space between the wheel well and the bottom of the, the platform for the wood soap. So I just built the little door that tips down and we store wood and you know everything we need for the wood stove under there. So it's kind of funny. This is actually an old baker's rack we bought 20 years ago and we used it in my wife's salon to hold color tubes and then you know as we're building this thing we're always looking for unique ways to utilize material we already had and so we had this baker's rack and we cut it down to fit right in here and now we use it to hold our toaster oven and you know other things we have a magnetic strip up here for our knives we have some of our root vegetables up here and then if we need to dry something we pull the stuff off and just lay it out here and it dries very quickly as well and that we do the same thing with clothes we'll throw clothes on here and they can dry quickly and then actually here <laughs> here's our clothesline so we throw our clothes on there and it dries out very quickly with the wood stove so Joni's dad had a farm and he had all this old tin, galvanized tin laying around. So she grabbed a whole bunch of sheets of it. And we actually used some of that in here. And so it's a little way to remember her dad's farm and right here in the bus. Here we have our kitchen eating area, dining room area, homeschool area, you know, the place where we gather pretty much every day. And we have these bench seats which we found again at this amazing used RV store. And these were brand new, but they were on clearance and they just wanted to get rid of them pretty much. So we were able to get them for a great, great deal. And everything in the school is kind of like repurposed, uh, things we could find for inexpensive. Joni's a thrift shopper, so we just found all kinds of good deals. Yeah, so we just built, you know, a shelf here to hold our computer and some other things mounted this this tray here so we could hold some other equipment and then we have our seat belts everyone always asks we have three kids where do they get buckled in or do they get buckled in and we do have a seat belt here there's one tucked there there's also two belts on this bench so this bench we had to build over a wheel well so of course our front tires are here and here so the wood stove is on one and this bench is on the other wheel well and to utilize the space in this we have to utilize every square inch for storage so under here we built three little cubbies because i had to build this out from the wheel well some so it would hold that bench okay so there's a little space in there we built three cubbies for storage this bench actually has storage inside of it so all of our kids all of our boys clothes are in here and so that's basically their closet. Then we have, this is our table. So this is a screen door latch. If anyone wants to do this idea, hardware store screen door latch. That flips down and then we have our table. So we do our homeschool, eating, anything we do, this is down most of the time. But when we wanna flip it up and get it out of the way, it just goes right like that. Okay, so on the ceiling, we tore out the metal ceiling and there was just fiberglass bat insulation in there. We pulled all that out and we replaced it with 70% merino wool insulation, which wicks away moisture because it's against a skin of metal. So it automatically is going to condensate. So we did that and then we put up one by three pine boards on the ceiling and these fat, <laughs> I didn't know when I started how much work that was going to be, but there's 900 fasteners in the ceiling. 
and uh, yeah, that was a few days worth of work, and I'm glad we did it. It looks cool. The sound dampening effect is awesome. We love the wool insulation. We haven't had any problems with water or moisture or drips or anything like that, so that was definitely worth doing that. And then at the same time we did the floor, we pulled everything off the floor, the rubber floor, and then any other, well, there was rubber floor, then three quarter inch plywood, we pulled all that up sealed the metal so it wouldn't rust anymore and then we put uh, one inch high density foam and i think we used half inch plywood and then we put on just snap together floor which has been super durable and we love it so far yeah it's waterproof durable can't really see dirt and it, it works great for us i'm going to show you guys our kitchen this is our tiny kitchen but yet i feel like it's adequate space for me to cook i cook three meals a day, except for Adam will sometimes make breakfast for us. But other than that, I like to cook healthy meals for my family. I've done that for years. Uh, we used to have a homestead, like we said at the beginning, so we would make all of our food from scratch, and I wanted to make sure that I could make healthy meals on the road. I didn't want to be going out to eat or eating things that I knew weren't going to feed us the nutrients and minerals that we wanted, that we were used to getting for our energy. So this is the only part of our schoolie that Adam didn't custom build as far as the drawers and cabinets go. This is from Ikea, but we love it. These drawers have soft openings. It's full. And so they soft close. This is actually intended to be our garbage can, but we felt like it was better to put all our pots and pans in the end in there. So that's just a little extra that we got for garbage and reused it for something else. We have to have our water filter on the road. We save money because we don't have to buy any of our water. We love this purification system. It's called a Pro-Pure, similar to a Berkey. But if we're filling up our water tanks anyway, we figure that we'll filter our own water. This is my oven. This is not the oven I wanted. <laughs> I actually got an old vintage oven. It was in working condition and I sanded and stained and painted it. It was absolutely adorable. We measured our whole bust in the centimeter and it was a 19 inch cutout and once we got it installed here the oven would not stay lit <laughs> so we tried and tried and we had to rip it out and we could not find one that small and so we had to saw this wall apart this is all finished off so we had to saw this out and shove this in but now that it's in I can cook just fine and it works great it just wasn't the one that we were thinking to put in. That's what you gotta do. You gotta be flexible when you're building these schoolies, so. This has been fantastic for me to cook. I normally will use one or two burners. We have been cooking over the open fire and that's been fun. And we've been using our wood stove to cook. And the oven is smaller than I'm used to, so I just have to plan ahead. And I can't do as much bulk as I once was, but there's not freezer space to freeze all that stuff and make it in advance anyway. So it's all fresh and I've enjoyed it. All right, so I probably could use a little bit more storage, but I've minimized most things down and you'd be surprised what you can do without. And so I have my spices and silverware in here and we just have like some cups, bowls, some of these, this is our deepest drawer. There's a lot in it. I mean, we have all these containers full of our proteins and extra snacks, dried fruit. We put that in there. This one, Adam built on a wheel wheel again, and this has got all of our Tupperware and bowls. It's deeper, so we can just store all of that in it. Sometimes if we're at an angle, it doesn't close. It's closing right now, so that's pretty good. And then these ones, we have plates and our utensils, then we're going to have some of our toiletries, hand towels, those work great because they're just little storage all the way down. And then we just had one upper cabinet that we got, that's all we could fit. And so this one's just our snack, snack cupboard. Our sink area we actually thought out in advance because we knew this was going to be our tight spot in the bus. We don't have bump outs in a schoolie. And with three kids and me being in the kitchen cooking, we wanted to make sure someone could do dishes without running into the other person over here. So we made sure this was actually bumped in 
So someone could almost fully stand here and do the dishes and that's still free to go back and forth. So we really like that about our design. I love the counter space. If we keep it like this, it works good. <laughs> People just stack stuff up, that's how it is. But I prep all of my meals right here. I have a wood cutting board I bring out and I've been able to prep all my meals. And actually, if I think about it, my old home, my old homestead, it's not that often that you have this full long space all the way down. So I actually had less counter space when it came down to it that was just one stretch. And so I'm able to keep my blender here along with this machine is an all-in-one for me so I can shred cheese, I can grind meat, I can do, I grind my own fresh flour on the road, I get like camu grain and grind it fresh. I'm able to do that all in this one machine. And so I love that, I had to bring that with, and I think it works as well as I would have hoped when we started the design. Okay, so I wanted a black sink. I just thought it would look really cool and sharp in our space. And quartz actually absorbs a lot of bacteria and it's antimicrobial. So I got a quartz sink and we love it. I just got a regular faucet I could pull out and clean up. This is fine. I did, just for space, get the little soap pump, which I really like because I just refill that. I don't have to have an extra bottle. That's When you're designing something like this, you have to think about being in movement. So anything that normally sits on the counter has got to come down or be glued down or it'll go flying. So we got this drying rack. We love this too. This comes on and off. So we just take it on, put it back when we need it. It's up most of the time as we're doing dishes, but if we want to detach it, we can. And this sink is deep enough and wide enough when we were designing we wanted to make sure that we had this little lip coming around because when you take stuff out of the fridge and set it down we knew that our fridge was stuffed right in here next to it and we didn't want to have to be like reaching all the way over here so we made sure to keep some extra inches around the sink and then we actually ended up building a backsplash and that is really nice too when we are sitting somewhere and boondocking for a while we can set up plants and make it look really homey so okay so this is really fun these move this is from ikea as well and you can bring them back and forth so we'll use these to hang any extra towels just paper towels it's not designed for paper towels but we can stick paper towels on there and when you're boondocking paper towels are kind of a must and so we end up using a couple of them we don't even use all of them at the same time but they're really nice to have if we want to and we can throw light dishes on there basically anything that we want we have a regular fridge this is not a propane fridge those suckers are a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> we'll invest in that maybe in the future. So just have a regular sized dorm fridge and like I was saying before I redid an old vintage fridge. It was adorable, amazing, one of the old-fashioned round fridges. Same thing, got it in here, filled it up. Adam went out a couple de days later and it was dead as a doornail. So our appliances were kind of humorous when we were doing this. Again, you just got to be prepared for bumps in the road. And so he had built a custom base for that fridge to go on. So we ended up last minute having to rip that base out, put this in. A guy who was helping us with our plumbing had both of these because he redoes RVs. And so he gave us a super steal on them. So again, black isn't my first choice, but it works great. It has more storage than the other one would have had. And then Adam had some of the extra cabinetry left over. So he built me this and the hinges bring it up, which is really nice, just like that cabinet and we can shut this down and that gives us extra storage over here so I do I can fit so much in here you have to be strategic and you notice that you do a lot of organizing when you're living in a schoolie so <laughs> for me every probably three days I have to redo the fridge bring stuff to the front move it to the back so I can see it because you know you're leaning down so you're doing this to try and like <laughs> get in your fridge <laughs> which is different but all these things that you know I wouldn't give up because there are little things in the grand scheme of things looking at the life we have now so so i just want to talk about the importance of latches on everything we have a latch on this cabinet because once you know when you're driving and you hit a curb everything comes out of this and it's just gets destroyed on the floor. Same thing with the fridge. One time we were going over a mountain pass and I was driving by myself while Joni was driving the car behind me 
and for about 45 or 50 miles through the mountains, this fridge swung open and everything dumped out, but I couldn't stop. There was nowhere to stop because I forgot to do that. So just a word to people looking to do a schoolie, make sure everything has a latch and can be extremely secure when you're driving. Otherwise you'll be driving and hearing things fall over and crack on the floor and it's a big pain. Here's our bathroom, which has been redone multiple times. Current state it's in may not be the final state, but this is it. So we had to find a spot for the bathroom. It was like the last thing we built. We built everything else, trying to figure out where it was gonna go. The bathroom was kind of the last thing we did, and it's small, of course, but you know what? It functions just fine. We have this tiny sink, which works well, medicine cabinet, which we just keep all our toiletries in, and we actually have a camping toilet, which is meant to take into the woods with you when you go camping. And Joni picked it up on eBay, or on, no, on Amazon, and we have it plumbed, so, we, it's got a urine diverter in it. It's kind of a homemade deal. So the urine goes into our gray water tanks with our dishwater and just any other gray water. And then our solids go into a bag. So it's kind of a combination, compost toilet, dry toilet. Anywhere we go where we fill up with fuel or whatever, they have garbages there so we're able to discard what we need to. And the urine just goes into the uh, gray water tank. So we don't have to worry about emptying a black water tank, which is a huge plus. Otherwise we'd be pulling out of our spots all the time to find a place to dump raw sewage, which is a big pain. So we actually love it. And it's just, it doesn't look the greatest. So that's one part of the bus that isn't finished yet, but we, we do love how it functions and how it works. So, so our gray water storage, we have about 60 gallons of gray water tank. So every day or two, we empty that. I just try to make it a point to empty it, you know, every two days for sure, just so we don't have any backups. We don't have alarms on everything in like class A's and other, you know, manufactured campers and stuff like that. There's always a switch that tells you how full everything is. Here's our switch. Yeah, that sounds like it's about full or it sounds like it's empty or whatever it is. That's how we roll. We don't have, you know, we don't have all the alarms and the, the monitoring system. So we just kind of manually go and check things and how full they are. Yeah, so for when we go number two in here, we cover it up with peat moss, which we keep in here. So you can get that at Home Depot or any other hardware store. It comes in a, you know, a compressed bag. And we use peat moss, really, there's almost no smell in here. And we tried other things and it didn't work as well. So we ended up going to peat moss and it's been working awesome ever since. So we went with regular house wiring, wiring in the whole bus. So the entire interior, all the switches and stuff are on 120 versus 12 volt. And we've had a lot of people say, why don't you go 12 volt? And the reason is it's hard to find 12 volt lighting that's not LED or it's not fluorescent. And for us and my wife, Joni in particular, the LED lights and the fluorescence, they have a certain flicker rate and frequency that they, they twitch at or they flicker at. And it really gives her a headache and our daughter as well. So we went with just regular lighting in here. These are Edison bulbs, so they give off a nice warm glow. Um, just think of an old time farmhouse from the turn of the century. Um, that's exactly what it looks like in here at night. So everything's kind of has an amber glow to it and it's not the bright blue LED lights that a lot of people have. So ours is kind of a throwback and uh, there's a little bit of a drawback to using house wiring. Simply it takes a lot more energy from our inverter, but not having headaches all the time is well worth it for us. So we just decided to go that route. So our long-term goal was to be full solar, have the whole roof full of solar panels and be totally off grid. Someone gave us and gifted us a solar panel that they had laying around and it's, uh, it's a pretty big one. I don't even know how many watts it is, but it works, actually it works pretty well. We have a charge controller on it and two deep cycle golf cart batteries, six volt. So we hook them together to make 12 volt. So we do have uh, that going and then from that, that's hooked up to our inverter. So it converts the 12 volt to the 120 for our house wiring in here. And then that's what runs everything. We just charge during the day. We do have a generator as well. So if we need, you know, if we're gonna run the blender or the vacuum or something for a long period of time, we'll go ahead and fire up the generator and, uh, or if it's cloudy or we just, you know, our battery's getting down there, then we'll go ahead and do that. Welcome to my mobile salon. This was part of Adam's dream to travel and be on the road full time. And what was holding me back from doing this, because I would love to be on these adventures as well, is I was running a full wellness salon and spa. Employees, 
spa, salon services, the whole nine yards. And I had owned that for 13 years. I've been doing hair for 17 years. And I just wasn't ready to leave my entire life to do this road life with Adam. But it was still in my heart. And so I decided to sell my salon and go do his dream and travel with him and get on the road, which I'm absolutely loving. There's adjustments with everything. But part of kind of our negotiation was whether we could use part of our square footage. I asked for seven feet of the bus to put my mobile salon in. I have a business where I ship uh, natural makeup and skincare. I have my own brand of makeup and skincare. And I love doing hair, I love serving people, and I didn't want that to go away. So Adam helped me design this and both of these were in my salon originally i had a really good friend ashley she recovered them for me she actually used to work for me at the salon and she did that so i recovered these chairs so it could look bright and vibrant and different in here a lot of people would put just a little sink up against the wall that they would have to stand next to I've been doing hair too long. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I need my stand behind shampoo bowl. So I still have that where I can come in and stand behind, adjust the sink to the clients. It fit right underneath here. We were super shocked that we were able to fit all of this in a tiny space. But I can cut hair. I can close my door off where I have all my inventory. And I have everything I need. I have my color cabinets. I have my makeup inventory all right here in this seven foot space. So. I had to get licensed in different states and I've done probably I would say one client a week or every couple weeks since being on the road. Not like my A to day that I left. Let's be honest how this is going to go <laughs> and what to expect. I just wanted to be able to do it and keep my license up. I eventually will go back to hair when we're not here so I'll use this probably as my salon until I feel like I maybe would want something bigger. But right now I'm content with this. It really is all that I need. So when you're building a schoolie, which I didn't build most of this, I helped design it and Adam built it. The one thing that can make it really difficult and sometimes frustrating is the ceiling. And so we, we wanted to put this cabinet in. I need a mirror so that when I'm doing clients and standing behind here, I can see them. And I also wanted this to have my inventory in here and we also have our fuse box and stuff down here. So this wood came from an old barn hayloft of one of my friends. So we stained it and actually whitewashed it for it to look more to fit in with our decor in here. And so we like how this corner looks but we needed it to be able to open too. So we split these up so we have two doors here and one door here so that this one can open up and I can store all of my inventory in here. And then this is how we <laughs> finished off this curved ceiling. So we had a friend helping us do this. And I mean, each one of these cuts looks little, but you got to just measure everything just so perfectly when trying to do these curved ceilings. Over here, I have my curling irons and everyone thinks it's really cute in my salon. I always had these uh, mason jars with hose clamps. And so we use the same thing in here to store my curling irons and Again, they're up and off the counter. Adam built another one of these flip down uh, spaces for me to put my color bowls and mix them on and I can flip it back up when that's not in use. So I basically have everything I need. Just sometimes I got to shimmy around a little more to get by people, but in the end it works just fine. Adam built these doors and one of the things that I thought would be super fun is to put this door that closes off the salon. We have all the inventory on the one side. So he built a thick door on rollers. So it's actually on wheels. We can close it and the same for this one. So he made it look like this and custom built it with wheels on the bottom. This has a bookshelf on the other side of it. So this closes off our bedroom area. But then also when this door is closed and that door is closed, then I'm legal to have my salon as well as our extra door here. Legally, I had to have a separate entrance for them to come in and both doors needed to close for me to be able to do business in the salon. So let's check out the bunks. So we get the question asked a lot. You have three kids and how do you get any privacy? Where do you where do your kids sleep and where do you sleep? So this is where the kids sleep. Right here we have two bunks, one on top, 
one on bottom. And again, we're playing with the wheel wells here. So the, the rear wheels are under this bunk and under this bunk on the other side. So we had to adjust for that when we made these. So we raised everything off the floor to the height of the bottom or the top of the wheel well and then started building the beds from there. So each child has their own space actually, which is pretty cool. Um, in here is where our daughter sleeps. So she has her own space and we have these accordion uh, blinds that come down so they get their privacy at night. We also have a little window, you know, so they can see out, see what's going on inside the bus while they're sleeping if they need to. Just add, adds a little bit more spacious feel inside the bunks having those, the windows. So this one also has a accordion blind that comes down. And so the kids each have their own privacy and they have a little window. And then on this side for our third child is we have the bunk on top here and for this one we just have a curtain that comes over plus the back of the door creates privacy for him and this also doubles as our bathtub so our bathtub is underneath his bunk so basically we do this when we have full hookups most of the time if we want to take a bath in the bus we have to pull off the mattress and the bedding and we just set that on our bed and then below here we have actually it's a cattle trough, uh, galvanized cal cattle trough, and we actually used the exterior bus paint and painted it the same color. So that sits on top of the wheel well, and we um, painted the trough, and that's actually our bathtub. So we had the trough in here, and we knew we wanted it to drain to the back. So we ended up starting with an inch and a half board and then tapering down all the way to just the plain subfloor. So we made sure our, the tub angled back so all the water would drain to the back. And then we had to build a top accordingly so we could also have a bed sit on top of here. So we had to build these sides so the mattress wouldn't fall off. I cut out a U-shape in here so it was easy to get in and out. And we usually put a little step stool here when we're taking a bath. And then this top, I custom made this top with the same angle as the tub so we'd have a flat surface on top but we could also lift this out. So this just pulls out and then inside of here, you know, right now we just have a, a washboard and a mat in there but here's our tub on the inside and we just use our water lines. We don't have a faucet permanently mounted but we just use the water lines and run it in here and take a bath, drain it all out and then when it's time to be all done we make sure it's dry and then we put everything back together. So this just goes, this, this lid just sits right in here. Just like that, we put the mattress back on and uh, we got another bed. So we knew we needed all the space we can get. So every door that we made, we tried to make storage on the back side. So this is just the back side of the salon door. We have a latch here if you want to lock it from this way, you can. And then we store all the kids' books here and that opens against here and that also creates space for our son when he sleeps up here so he has a little more privacy too with the solid door. So our bedroom is at the back of the bus. We originally didn't know if what we got was going to fit because we were told that our bus was going to be eight feet wide and when we got it, it was actually seven and a half feet wide. So in advance we had purchased this set for our bed because it also has a trundle underneath it that pulls out in case we need an extra bed. We have a couple benches here for storage but we can move those out of the way if we need to use the trundle. And it just barely fit back here this way. We were intending to put it the other way so we were pretty excited that we got this in here and we wanted this to look just beautiful and simple because this is our only spot to relax as a couple. We have three kids and we're leading a busy lifestyle and I wanted it to look like vintage, but also I grew up on a farm, so some of the barn door hinges just appeal to me. And so I let Adam know, he knows this about me. <laughs> I'll go number two in a compost toilet, but I need to bring my clothes with. That's just me. I'm half outdoors and the other half, I love fashion and hair and makeup. So I play both roles, but he knew that I wanted to bring my clothes with and so, <laughs> I let him know that I wasn't going to have one of those capsule wardrobes, that's just not, not my jam. So he built these custom cabinets all the way around for me and all the way around the back. And I remember the day when I came out here, he was working late into the night 
and he put all the knobs on and all the hinges on and I came out here and I basically got teary-eyed. I was pretty excited because I gave him my vision and he's like, is this what you thought? And I was like, it's so perfect. They're so beautiful. I love this back area. Um, we thought we would watch movies <laughs> together, have popcorn, relax. We've never watched a movie since we've been on the road. We've been on the road, we're coming on our fourth month. And so that was kind of funny about living in a schoolie. But other than that, it's perfect. Our bed is comfortable. We got a new mattress for the road. We treated ourselves with a new mattress because our bed was a queen size bed and we had to downsize to a full size bed. A queen bed would not have fit. And so we wanted to get a nice mattress because we were already downsizing to a smaller size. And we fit everything we need. Eventually we ran out of time. He wanted to continue building the cabinets all the way down for the kids. So we just got some extra cabinets to put in temporarily because you guys know how it is. There's going to be continued projects, but all in all, we love how it is. We close off that door. We wanted it open for a reason. We didn't put a wall here because we wanted to be able to walk in here and have it feel really open. And it's just worked out just fine for us. So we just pull the curtains closed, go to sleep. The kids, we can close off that door. If we need privacy and the kids aren't in here, we just close off the door and we have our privacy. So here is our entryway of the bus. It's a little tight because we have the front engine bus, but it works for us. Originally, when I bought the bus, this step right here, <laughs> there is the rubber over the steps and that rubber was hiding a giant hole like that big. It was rusted right through. So I ended up having to fabricate a pieces of metal and I welded them together and we basically slid that right over the top so we have new steps underneath, it's super solid. Then we were trying to figure out how to finish it off and we were at Joni's mom and dad's place and they actually had, we said, do you guys have any extra wood laying around? And he had bundles of, of, of maple, which is super hard. So we used, this 20 year old maple that he had sitting around the farm and we ended up using those for the treads and it's held up extremely well so far with all the dirt, snow, ice, rain, everything else, it's held up extremely well. And then the back, the kick plates on these is actually remnants from our cabinets. We had extra side panels and we put those on there. So I think it looks, it looks great. A little, uh, the combination of the colors and uh, it's holding up really well. And then in here, Inside of the bench seat that we bought, th this side was just this like super thin fabric. You could see through it was meant to be the back of the bench, but it actually had a big hollow spot on the inside. So instead of just covering that up, we thought we'd utilize the space and we ended up building, these are super deep cubbies that go back probably two feet. And uh, we're able to store books and you know other things, hang our keys here and stuff like that in the entryway. So it's kind of a convenient spot when you're walking in. You can throw your keys on there, kick your shoes off and uh, grab a book if you want, so. All right, so tires. When we bought this bus and I drove it back from Montana, it had a major vibration factor when I was driving. It was like, <laughs> and uh, it had a tire that had a giant dip in it. And so I got rid of that tire, we got a new one on in the front, and that took care of that. Then the other problem with it is it pulled to one side. It always pulled to the left super hard, so I was cranking the wheel constantly. And we actually had, for whatever reason, on schoolies or any other large piece of machinery, you know, they have certain things about them, little intricacies about the bus or the machinery in general. And this one, for some reason, the tires on the inside were wearing a lot faster than the outside. I had a mechanic or a tire shop take the other front tire off and turn it around and then mount it back on. And now it drives straight as an arrow. So it just had to do, it was pulling one way because the tire was wearing a certain way and now it drives great. The storage bays are nice. And actually that was one reason we bought this bus is because it must have been an activity bus or a football bus. It had the highest ceiling we could find without having to do a roof raise. And it had the under storage because we knew we have a lot of stuff. We have three kids, we have just stuff in general. So we have these full. You know, shoes, life on the road, we ship, ship stuff all the time, so all our shipping materials are right there. And we can go to any post office and drop things off. And uh, yeah, I mean, our storage bays are full of just stuff. You know, you have shoes for different weather, you have uh, just different clothes for different weather, gear that you need, tools that you need, and the under storage has been great for that. I don't know what we'd do without it, to be honest. All right, so everyone who knows me knows that my favorite color is teal. Adam let me pick the color of the bus. And so 
my baby brother, he's not really a baby, but he's amazing. <laughs> he used to paint buses for New Flyer and he now works at 3M and they've been prototyping spray guns and they had some paint laying around. And so I sent him a photo. He said he wanted to contribute to our bus build. We thought that was really nice of him. He wanted to take part in it. And so he said he'd come up, if we sanded the whole thing, he'd come up and paint the bus for us. So I sent him a photo of what my perfect color would be. And he kind of wrote back and said, he wasn't sure if he could do that because number one, it had a metallic look to it. Number two, he's just mixing paint. And he said, metallic's pretty difficult when I'm just pre-mixing random paint that we're getting for free. <laughs> and so I just said, whatever you can get us, that's fine. And so he uh, said, you guys need to have the, the bus sanded before I arrive. So those of you who have never sanded a bus, which is probably a lot of you, we had to take a piece of sandpaper and by hand sand every single one of these rivets. I don't know how many there are, but there are probably thousands. Then you gotta take a regular sander and you're just, I mean, you gotta hold that thing down trying to get, get it buffed out and sanded down and my hand, I can still feel my hand vibrating. <laughs> from sanding this bus. So we got most of it sanded before he came and then he started taping off while we were finishing sanding. Then we drove it out. He primed it, painted it. I might not have this exactly right, but I only think he used like a couple quarts of paint for the whole thing because that sprayer was amazing. And then he put a clear coat on it. We ended up having to buff the clear coat a little bit because where we had insulated, it got cold that night and you could see some of like the white film coming through. But he buffed it out and it ended up being the perfect color with metallic as I sent him for the photos, like an old vintage car. So we love the color. We kept the stop sign. I just put a little bit of my name on there for the mobile salon. We wanted to keep the stop sign. It's just too cute not to. Another thing I really love is they had these horns on the bus. They don't work. I think they're called horns. <laughs> but all in all, we put the ladder where we put it because we have the wood stove and he's got to take the top of it, um, the chimney part. He's got to take some of that down when we're driving. And so we mounted our ladder here and I think that this paint job will actually last till we don't use this bus, so. Thank you guys so much for watching and being a part of our lives and our journey right now on the road. We're super thankful to be able to share this with you. So we're gonna link it down below if you guys have any interest in my mobile salon, getting your hair done on the road. It's called jamelios.com. And then if you want botanical, mineral makeup, or skincare, it's all natural. That's called Cherry Picks Makeup. We also do wellness coaching for holistic supplements if you're in need of anything that way. Follow us on our social media, Instagram.com, we're Adam and Joni Adventures. Also on YouTube as Adam and Joni Adventures. Find us on Facebook as well. Everything will be linked down below. You find all our socials and our websites. Mm -hmm.